Does the panel agree that AI could be the next form of evolution after Homo sapiens? And what does the panel think of the philosophy that humans have unwittingly engineered their own extinction? Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple question, so thank you for asking. We thought we'd um, start easy you know, I, I would say it probably a little bit differently. I would say that for all of human history, we've known that the way that we access the world is through these feeble senses and through this thing inside of our head that processes the incoming data. We don't actually see the external world for real. We process it through these things that have come to us through evolution. What AI gives us is the possibility of seeing the world in a very different way. AI doesn't process the world through eyes and ears and through a brain. It does it through a completely different system. And what's exciting to me is that we may learn things about reality that we have no idea of, that we could never be sensitive to because of the limitations of our biological form given to us by evolution. So that, to me, is where AI can take us. And extinction? Can it take us to extinction? Anything can take us to extinction. <laughs> can, this, can this particularly take us to extinction, which was the centre of the question? It's a real worry. But I would not let that stop us. We have to have the guardrails in place. No doubt we'll talk about that. But the opportunities are so enormous that we can't let the fear mongers win on this one. We have to be careful. We have to have guardrails. But we have to go forward. OK. Kathy Foley. Well, I'm really worried about extinction if we don't get climate change under control. Mm. So that's something which is the first thing if you're worrying about extinction. So that's a really good question. But I think we need to recognise that uh, we've got big problems, that we have to use every tool in our toolbox, and AI is a pathway of doing that. One of the things it's is doing already is uh, helping us be able to detect cancer better. Uh, it's able to allow us to uh, absorb l very large amounts of data and be able to get some sense out of it. And they're just two examples. We're, we'll be seeing the opportunities that AI bring to us as humans as something which really make a big difference to us. I've also got to remember that AI is a set of computer programs. It's not sentient, it's not magic. It's, uh, it's software that's looking at statistics that goes back and looks at all the data that's, uh, at its, at, at, that's available to it and then be able to bring out some information based sure, on Kathy, what we Sure, Cathy, as for. it is now. But what happens if it gets smarter than us? Well, it's up to us to design things in a way where we have, as Brian was saying, guardrails that say this is where we are agreeing on something and where we don't agree. I mean, we've done this all the way through humanity. When we uh, developed our nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, biological weapons, we cre created treaties that said around the world, this is how we will operate. Jessie, is it freaking you out slightly? It's freaking me out because I'm listening to the people who are creating it and they're saying it's freaking them out. So they're sort of going, we don't know what this can do. Sometimes we don't fully know how it works. And when I'm hearing them say that this has the potential to, I think I heard Sam Altman say, um, switch the lights off of humanity, that makes me a little bit worried. And I agree that it needs guardrails, but what worries me is that when there's capitalist incentives for AI and we're in a bit of an arms race, that when does this stop? Are we deploying technologies that we don't fully understand that could have terrible consequences and in the hands of the wrong people, you know, if it's the bad guys have it, the bad guys can do bad things. And that's the big question. Mm. Cathy, I'll let Well, you one in. thing which actually you have to remember is it uses a lot of energy. Mm. Mm. And uh, one of the things which, if anything, if uh, you can pull the plug out, but also there's a prediction that we will uh, use up so much energy with doing AI that we actually won't have enough energy in general. So. Mm. I think that's going to be one of the limiting factors. Yeah, that, right. uh, you, you just can't let things grow forever. And if you have good guys with AI, and you have to hope that the good guys are smarter than the bad guys, because the bad guys are usually bad because they're not as smart as the good guys. They can't make it in the ordinary yeah. way. Mm. So if you got the good guys with the AI, there's a real opportunity for them to that's construct true. the AI to combat the very things that people are genuinely and mm, okay. legitimately concerned about it. All right, that's quite a binary way of looking at it, right? There's <laughs> the good guys and the bad guys. And I, look, I like, I like it. I like it. I like it. It seems easy, but I don't <laughs> think it works like that, does it? Um, perhaps my background makes me a little bit, um, perhaps more wary. 
Um, I completely agree we can't ignore it. It's like ignoring the tide coming in. So I think we have to yeah. embrace it. We have to put guardrails on it. We have to develop it. But other less um, uh, ethical... Uh, individuals, leaders, countries will will choose to progress whether we like it or not. Mm. I'm a bit of a science nerd. I apologise, and 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 there's a. <laughs> I, there's I a, can't a figure thing. out how you got invited <laughs> onto the show. A particular <laughs> particular event. Um, uh, machines started beating humans in the chess game in, in the late 80s. Um, chess, relatively bounded game, finite number of moves. There's an Asian strategy game called Go, and hugely popular in South Korea, China, and Japan. And uh, a team of, of AI researchers challenged the Go world champion in 2016. And, and I think this will become kind of anthropologically one of the most interesting things in AI development. The, the world champion they, they, they challenged Lee Sedong was the Roger Federer of, of Go. He had won 18 world championships in a row. He was arrogant and dismissive of the computer because he said it, this is a game of, of judgment. There's no set moves, you know, two up, one left. It's a game of judgment. And the computer beat him easily in the first game. But people said, oh, well, he was taking it lightly. In the second game, he was uh, leading and the commentators were all comfortable that he's righted the ship and, and the human will prevail. There's a famous move. I think it's move 37. Pro pro forgive the geekiness. <laughs> but the computer plays a move that so shocks Lee Sedong that he sort of pushes his chair back and uh, it's interrogated later, and the machine says this was the move I assessed would most shock the human player. Mm -hmm. Now, that's starting to make me nervous. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we move toward general intelligence, the machines will find ways to shock us uh, and, and find us uh, in, in our areas of weakness. So, so yes, we've got to develop it, guardrails. Mm -hmm. I think the idea of pulling a plug in those data centres, we, we need to build okay. a, a really easy plug. Nadia, mm -hmm. isn't it the case that the AI is going to be so smart that when it realises we're about to pull the plug, it's going to outsmart us? I don't know. I have to... Um, maybe I'll say something controversial, um, but I don't think AI is going to be the extinction or evolution of the human race. Um, the reason... Oh, controversial? <laughs> it's a perspective. Um, and even though I'm an ethical AI advocate, I'm, I'm pretty... I think it's going to bring amazing things to human race. Um, and I think we have to make a distinction between what is malicious and non-malicious. So we have to regulate the people, not the technology. And also, if you look at any piece of, like, important piece of technology that's been developed, it's always amplified a, a part of the human race. So, for example, like social media, it's made us more sensitive to how, what people think of us and how people perceive us. But there was always a part of who we were, and maybe AI will amplify other aspects of us. For example, like productivity, but in both good and bad ways. Creativity, both good and bad ways. And so I think it will amplify um, us in ways that we, want, we might not expect. Um, but we do, I think we are in the sweet spot now where we can get, we, we don't have to be as late as we were to social media when it mm -hmm. comes to AI. We are in a place that we can control it and then mm -hmm. we can have a discussions to uh, put the right guardrails in place.